Teaching Blast. Technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructorlet.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Now let's switch our attention to Windows Azure. Windows Azure is actually a set of cloud technologies, each providing a set of services to application developers. We have Windows Azure itself. This is a Windows-based environment for running applications and storing persistent data on servers in Microsoft data centers. Your applications will actually reside in what's called the compute portion of Windows Azure. The data in storage. Now this storage is not SQL Server, not a relational database. We'll find in a little bit about the three different types of storage provided by Windows Azure. We also have SQL Azure. This is SQL Server running in the cloud. Or what we probably should say is almost SQL Server running in the cloud. In other words, this is SQL Server, but with some limitations. So it is a relational database, but not quite the same SQL Server 2008 you might find in your data centers. Lastly, we have Windows Azure App Fabric. App Fabric today provides two capabilities, or if you will, two functions. One is access control, if you will, security. And the other, a service bus to provide connectivity either between applications in Azure environments or between applications that run on-premise or between applications in the cloud and on-premise. So Windows Azure is the hosting environment for your cloud-based services. A large group of machines, each potentially running a number of virtual machines, uh, with switches, load balancer, and more running in Microsoft data centers make up what is called the fabric. The fabric provides your virtualized computation and storage platform. Computation will be in the form of two different types of applications or roles that you create, either web or worker roles. These will be described momentarily. Storage of data is in the form of blobs, tables, and queues. More on these also in a bit. Now the fabric and the applications and data that reside in it are monitored and controlled by the fabric controller. The fabric controller is the automated service management system that handles provisioning, geo distribution, and the entire life cycle of cloud-based services. In essence, the fabric controller acts as a kernel that you'd see in any other desktop OS. It communicates with a fabric agent running on each machine and is also aware of every application and the storage, which by the way, it just sees another application in, running in the fabric. It monitors running applications, manages the OS, for example, taking care of patches, decides where applications should run, trying to optimize hardware utilization, performs recovery whenever one of the systems fails, and does much, much more. By the way, if you're interested, each virtual machine running in the fabric runs Windows Server 2008 Enterprise 64, along with a modified version of Hyper-V. With regard to computation, again, you'll create applications that consist of web, and worker roles. For scalability, you will dictate to the Azure cloud environment how many copies or instances of each role you want to exist. Each instance runs on its own virtual machine within the fabric. For those roles that are exposed to outside traffic, web roles as shown here, for example, Azure also provides a load balancer help spread the traffic amongst the instances that are running. And this is done automatically. Thus, Azure provides increased scalability by just dictating more instances of your compute roles. 
Again, there are two types of roles. Web roles, which typically provide the interface to end users. These are ASP.NET applications, in typical cases, that handle HTTP and HTTPS requests from users. By the way, to support this web role running on virtual machines in the cloud, each virtual machine that supports a web role includes IIS 7. Web roles should be stateless. In other words, any data that the web role needs should be stored in Azure Storage, which again includes tables, queues, and blobs. Worker roles, on the other hand, are not typically end user exposed. In fact, worker role instances initiate their own request for input. It can read messages from a queue, for example, or it can't open connections with the outside world. Those roles, or I should say worker roles, do the data crunching work behind the scenes. In essence, worker roles are similar in nature to batch jobs or Windows services. While they can be communicated with directly, a good practice is to communicate with worker roles via that message queue again. Worker roles, in fact, are often set up to monitor the queue and to take their instructions from messages left in that queue. You can have as many web or worker roles as you desire in your Azure applications. Often the two types of roles work together to provide an entire application. Web roles communicate with the end user and queue up work for worker roles that process the request and then manage the data in the background. Azure provides, again, three forms of data storage, blobs, queues, and table. This, again, is not relational data storage. In general, this storage is for keeping application state. It can be utilized by applications both in and outside of the cloud. Regardless of how it is stored, again, whether it be blobs, tables, or queues, all the data in Windows Azure storage is replicated three times. This replication provides that fault tolerance. Each replicate is also on a different server. So all three Windows Azure Store styles, again, blobs, queues, tables, use the conventions of REST, the REST API, to store, modify, and retrieve data. However, an Azure Storage Client API that uses ADO.NET data services and link can also be used by net .NET applications. Here are some uh, pictures of one of the uh, Microsoft data centers. In particular, this is an overhead shot of the data center located in Chicago. And here is inside that data center a uh, picture of the containers, truck containers, that actually house oh, anywhere from around 1,800 to 20, I think 2,500 uh, computers each that run our Azure environment. Each of those containers is provided with its own heating, cooling, electricity that's just jacked in to the resources available inside uh, the computing center. Now when it comes to data centers, there's actually four different generations of data centers that Microsoft has identified. Generation one, their first data centers are just typical data centers that you might find in your operation. Uh, and nothing really special about them other, other than the fact that they are large and obviously provide for our uh, environment, our Azure environment. Generation two, try to reduce a lot of the operational costs, particularly paying attention to things like heating and cooling and electricity. So try and optimize that for the large data centers to come. And generation three, which uh, Chicago being the first of generation three data centers, is a total containerized server environment. By that I mean the warehouse essentially holds a set of truck trailers. Each truck contains 1,825 servers, as I mentioned before. There's a video at the link you see here on the screen, which describes that uh, and shows you some pictures of that particular type of data center. And last is of Generation 4. Uh, these are to be built, but according to um, speculation and information on the web, you'll see uh, one is uh, being built in, or at least supposedly being built in Europe. And there's a YouTube video out there, an animation of what Generation 4 data centers are going to look like. These are going to be massive data centers, roofless. The entire center is essentially a grassy field filled with these um, trailer trailers, I should say truck trailers, that provide our computing environment.
For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Thank you.